What's up guys, Guillaume Zeran, welcome back to Pro 2022 for the preview of Season 3 of the Savalo Career Mode. Just like what we had on the way down Marché, we are going to take a look at the new teams slash new sponsors slash new kits, run through the lineups ahead of this new season. Starting off with a team that hasn't changed jersey in two years, Intermarché ou Antigobert. They are still in Warsaw, but they are led by Dylan Dunt, their brand new signing. Uh, Benny Girmay is still here, so it's Jan Hertz, and then Taco Van Erhoorn, Matthew Muscati, and Quinton Emmons are the main riders of Intermarché, not the best of teams, but they should be able to do something. Up next, a team that changed jersey last season, but not this year, it's Total Energy. Still in Warsaw, one of the two French teams still in Warsaw. Uh, led obviously by Richard Carapaz, but then also Valentin Rotaillot and Peter Sagan still here. Valentin Ferron and Clément Champoussin will try to uh, bring a few wins as well to uh, the team of Jean-René Bernardo. Another team that saw their jersey change but not their sponsor is EF Education First. They've said uh, goodbye to the pink and the uh, ridiculous jerseys, although I do want to see uh, a comeback of the Dark on the Tour de France uh, or on the Giro. Then by yeah. Ethan Vernon, but also Jonas Rouch, Ruben Guerrero and Marijn van Berg. It's not the greatest of teams for EF. Uh, I mean, the jersey may be green, but I don't think the results will be in the green compared to last season. Yet another team that only changed uh, jersey and not sponsors, it is UAE Team Emirates. They they're quite good with Tade Pogacar, Juan Ayuso, Joao Almeida, Marc Soler. Um, they also have Fernando Guevara for the sprints. They've lost David Persico, which I think they'll be quite disappointed with that. But overall, very, very strong team. Uh, they're now rocking a black jersey, primarily black jersey. I mean, is it to now finally see the difference when they get the white jersey of every Grand Tour? Yeah, probably. I think there's only two teams that uh, still are in Warsaw without changing anything uh, except the jersey, and this time it's Ineos, Ineos Grenadiers. Egan Bernal, Dylan Van Barlet, Daniel Martinez, and Matej Moric, but also the two Yates brothers and Thomas Pitcock. Strong team, they've kept their, their core, really. They haven't really lost anyone except, I mean, except Carapaz and like Carlos Rodriguez, but the, the core is is so Garen Thomas. Very nice jersey though for uh, for Ineos Grenadiers, a bit of a of dark blue to red shade. You have to uh, you have to appreciate it. And the final team, I think, in uh, Walter this year that hasn't changed anything is Quick Step or Soudal Quick Step. I finally given them their real name. Led by Julian Philippe, Casper Asgren, Rem Kevenepoel, Fabio Jakobsen, still Mark Cavendish, somehow he's, he's still out here. Um, Remy Karen is there, Benoit Cosnefroy is there as well, Maxime Van Gils. Strong team for uh, the, the Belgians. Remco may not be as good in this game as he is in real life, or seems to be on this world tour. But uh, I, I think there's some big things coming for, uh, for the boys at Soudal Quickstep. We have two teams that uh, now rock a new co-sponsor. The first one being Lotto, finally getting Destiny as their sponsor. Um, they've managed to get Team Merlier. They've lost a big sprinter in Caleb Ewan, as you'll see um, a bit further down the road. But they've got Team Merlier. Florent Vermeersch, Arnaud Deli, Victor Campanart, Zander Svervlosum, who had seemed very good on, uh, I believe it was the Vuelta. Brent Van Meur, Sylvain Monique. The, the, the team is still here. Is it still a weak team? Yes, definitely weak. Uh, but I reckon Lotto Destiny could potentially try to get a few wins. Is that enough to save them? I'm not sure, but uh, they're for sure going to give it their best. The second team that saw a change of co-sponsor is Bora. Uh, Hans Grohe is gone, and it is Alpesin who will co-sponsor a team in cycling. Sam Bennett, John Hindley, Alexander Vlasov, Nils Polit, Sergio Higuita, and Rapagioli, and Wilco Kelderman being the key riders of Bora. They've lost quite a lot of riders. Uh, they've lost their German core with um, Schachmann and Kemna. Transition is complicated, but it would have expected to lose a few Germans when Hans Grohe has left you. Uh, you've also lost Ider Schelling, who was very, very good last year, but couldn't keep him. But it's good, you, you still have Walter Kellerman and, and Danny Von Poppel, so woo! And we now move to some of the brand new teams we'll see this year. First off is Liquigas. Liquigas, who has taken over Astana, uh, sadly not paying your riders, does come at a cost. That cost, not financially, because obviously not paying anyone, but it is losing your team. 
And it's Liquigas who felt there was a lack of Italian talent and Italian teams in World Tour that came back. Miguel Angel Lopez leads the team, Yanni Morscon, Davide Persico and Lorenzo Fortunato come here to try and strengthen the Italian core with Samuel Battistella and Damiano Caruso. It is a very, very decent team, very interesting team as well, um, capable of good results on basically every terrain. I reckon that we could have a bit of a, of a success story here with Liquigas and finally this time the riders will earn a paycheck. Another team that changed sponsor, uh, sadly, the crisis in Australia and the fact that there was no racing for two years was enough for Bike Exchange to remove themselves as key sponsors. And it is now Qantas, the uh, airways company, the main company, the airliner, sorry, of Australia, who has taken the helm of, um, of, of the only Aussie team in World Tour. They've managed to retain uh, Rune Wegen. They've retained Schultz, Caden Groves, and Michael Matthews. So you could think that sprinting wise, they'd be good. But no, they've added Caleb Ewan to this team. They have lost any kind of mountain capability. There is no one in that team able to climb except, I mean, the best one is Jesus David Peña Jimenez. That's not exactly thrilling, but expect them to perform on every time or every time there is a flat stage. No more Valverde means no more Movistar. It is Orbea who's taking the lead of Movistar. Uh, I believe, uh, did I keep them on Pinarello bikes or Canyon? Nope, they, they have no bikes as a matter of fact. That's, that's simply lovely. Uh, I guess I'll fix that. Um, or maybe I won't, I don't know. But Orbea has taken the lead um, as the sole Spanish team in World Tour as well. Enric Mas, Alex Aramburu, Ainer Rubio, Gorka Izaguirre and Pierre Latour to lead a team, a team with no expectations whatsoever on terrains that aren't mountainy. Uh, so, yeah, don't expect to see a lot of Orbea, except the mountains where Enric Mas will try and come third or second. It is one of my favorite new teams. It is Nike. Nike Alphabet, to be exact, a collaboration between the biggest shoe manufacturer and arguably the biggest company in the world because it has Google. Nike X Alphabet Cycling replacing Trek Sigafredo. No more coffee. Uh, but now we've got some proper shoes. For the American outfit, Jasper Stoyven at its helm, Quinn Simmons. But that's it, when it comes to American riders, uh, then it's quite a strong Italian core with uh, Ciccone, Covi, Tiberi and Cimolai. Marburg Stenga is still here, a uh, nice prospect for Trek. But yeah, I genuinely, genuinely love the design of the jersey and the color combination that, like, like it, similar to, to Vice City, it, it just works. Like, it, it just works, and the swoosh, to see the swoosh in cycling, it's purely just brilliant. We've got five more teams to present, I think. And the first one is the comeback of Vacances Soleil. A uh, bit of a, of a soft spot for me. They were one of my favorite teams when I was younger. Um, and they make the comeback in the sport, replacing the almighty DSM with some big names. Because, sure, you still have Romain Bardet, you still have Marco Brenna, you still have Timon Aronsman, but you now... I've added Anthony Turgis, and mostly you've added Ede Schelling to the lineup from DSM to Vacancelle DCM. There is only one letter, and the Dutch outfit comes here to get a lot of wins. Uh, Dinazer is your only sprinter, lack of case ball, I guess. But uh, I'm quite, quite happy to see them back in the sport. Actually, now there is five teams, because we start off with an absolute masterclass of a sponsor move. FDG is no more. Marc Mathieu has had enough, and Peugeot has taken the lead of one of the most historic cycling teams, but also, they managed to get Red Bull on board, for a simple reason. Peugeot and Red Bull have a long time cooperation, it's been the case in WRC, it's also the case in Endurance, but Red Bull has a partnership with a rider in World Tour. And yes, you may be thinking the right thing, well or not, has joined Peugeot Red Bull. Oh, that's so French, Peugeot Red Bull, fuck me. Peugeot Red Bull. Why why not? David Godu, Mikel Landa, Arnaud Demar, what a lineup. Also, still Thibaut Pinot, let's not forget about him. But what a lineup there that is for Peugeot Red Bull. I mean, it's, it's just lovely. It's a lovely kit. But with Vaud von Art gone, what happens to Jumbo Visma? Well, it's funny you ask, because Jumbo Visma is no more. 
Rabobank, Belkin, call them whatever you want. But Yombo Visma or Lotto Yombo, whatever, they're not there anymore. It is now Zwift uh, from the virtual world to the real world. There's only one step and Zwift has taken it. And what a better way to make your World Tour debut than with the signing of Mathieu van der Poel replacing Wout van Aert. Numerically, Primoz Roglic, Mathieu van der Poel, Jonas Vingegaard, Christophe Laporte, Tish Benoit, Olaf Koy. That is a staggering team that will enter World Tour this year. I mean, I felt like the move had to be done. With, with Van Aert at Red Bull, I felt that Mathieu van der Poel had to come to, uh, to Zwift, to the, uh, the Dutch outfit. And with then, we only have three teams left. And there's a reason why Alpecin decided to co-sponsor a new team, because they've lost Alpecin Phoenix. And it's a fucking favorite that's coming back. It's the almighty Williams Martini. From the depth of Continental three years ago. Two years ago? Two years ago. Williams Martini. A name you have to remember. They've made their way back into World Tour. Led by Jasper Stoven, sorry, by Jasper Philipson, Ben Tana, Ethan Hater. It's not the greatest of team, right? Because Alpecin relied mostly on Team Merlier and Mathieu van der Poel, and both of them are gone. But with the addition of a monument winner in Ben Tana, of Ethan Hater, there's hope. There's hope for Williams Martini. Look at them. Look at them. Ah, I love them. My team, come on. I'll, I'll root for them. Except that there's only two teams left and I need to kind of root for at least one. And that team will not be this one. Because look at them go. Team Mobile Banky are back in the sport again. I mean, we, we, we even got Joe Teams. We even have Joe Teams leading the Team Mobile Banky team. Abby, oh, it's, just, it's just, it's brilliant. It's simply brilliant. And Team Mobile Banky came back with force. They got Schachmann. They mostly got Pedersen, but also they got Filippo Ganna, the Italian time trialist king, not world champion this year. I know he wanted him to win so that he could be world champion for Timo Banki for the first season of them coming back. Uh, but they've taken over Bahrain, all those who wandered. Uh, Bahrain has disappeared. I mean, Israel has gone as well. Uh, they're, they're in Conti Pro. Uh, Bahrain has just has had enough of cycling, and it is Timo Banki that took the chance to come back in World Tour. What, what else could you say? Rocking their, their, their usual jersey as they crossed the line, fair enough. Uh, but yeah, simply magnificent performance. Meaning there's only one team left. It, it is us. Cervelo Test Team has now a new sponsor. Garmin! Garmin Cervelo is back in World Tour. And what a lineup. G genuinely, what a lineup! We decided to strengthen the North American side by getting Magnus Sheffield, by getting Matti Jorgensen, Kevin Vermarker, Sean Quinn, but also the Swiss one, because we got none other than Stefan Kung. What else could you want? We got Luis Mendes as well, because, I mean, at that time, Garmin Cervelo had Darrell Impey. And I figured I would have liked to have a South African rider. And for those who know cycling, you would remember that they also had a certain Murilo Fischer. Uh, I don't have Murilo Fischer, but I have next next thing. Uh, Vinicius Rangel Costa, I think, the uh, Brazilian champion, is joining or has joined Garmin. Uh, you'll also find Seb Van Marker in the lineup because he was there 15 years ago. No, it's, uh, like 10 years, 12 years ago now in this safe. So. Yeah, quite happy with all the signings. I'll put the uh, entire lineup at least for us at the end. Um, but that is your preview, and that is your World Tour roster for the 2024 season. You've seen most of our team um, in the previous screen, um, but here it is in its entirety. That's the lower end. It is Vinicius Rangel Costa that joined us, the Brazilian champion. Um, Nathan Prenner has uh, progressed. And then it's We've kept the Canadian core of our team. Uh, we do have a few ads as well from the reserves, uh, but we first have Derek G that comes from UAE. We've got Basin Ray, who's a youngster. Oh, he's already progressed, Matt. Okay, congrats. Uh, we've got Hannes Almeida, 
Carson Murphy, I think there's another one, but I've missed him. Um, yeah, I can't see him again. But basically, that is our lineup for the next season. I hope you like it. I think it's a fun lineup. Um, the next season, we'll definitely try and get a sprinter. Because I'm still liking, I think my best sprinter is Pesega, and then it's Leonard. Yeah, it is. So, yeah, we need to get a sprinter. We haven't invested in that in two years. But I really hope you've enjoyed, um, well, I really hope you've enjoyed the, uh, the lineup. And I hope you've enjoyed this preview. Season 3 uh, will start in a bit. Uh, I think I'll upload this on Monday, right after the Vuelta. So, expect during this week to have the first episode of Season 3. And that is about it. Um, you'll go, I'll go through the entire process of making the schedules, the planning, everything. Uh, this is just a BTEC save right now, so I could show. Uh, I put the corner desk instead of the down desk so that you could see the lineups and everything. But yeah, uh, I hope you've enjoyed this. If you have, then do destroy that like button for the comeback of Garmin Cervelo in World Tour, and also the comeback of Timo Borbanki and Williams Martini. Come on, like they're, they're goated. And I'll see you very, very soon. My name is Guillaume. Have an amazing day. See ya. Pass me the funk. Get your funk on, girl. And don't you ever